Hello, welcome. This is Blockchain Bloom, the Blockchain Educator. I'm Atla Pinke, and in today's video, I'm going to talk about that actually now is the anniversary, the 90 years anniversary, that if you owned gold in the United States, you actually had to give it to the Fed on a fixed price. And what did they do after that? Do you know? Well, I'm going to tell you in a second. Well, and then we have here um, Apple. Apple which might be in Bitcoin somehow or owns Bitcoin, but there is a very interesting uh, secret message built into the Mac operation system, Mac OS. Uh, yeah, I'm going to tell you as well. And we have a Swiss government-owned bank, Post Finance, and they now offering crypto service to their customers so guys all this in today's video don't forget every single day i bring a couple of new videos for you to keep you up to date so if that's important for you then definitely subscribe and if you like this kind of content what i'm doing then simply hit the like button as well so let's do it okay and for start as usual we do Let's have a look at the market. So Bitcoin is actually down now 2% in the last 24 hours. Ethereum pretty much the same, 2%. That makes Ethereum 1,869. Why? Bitcoin 27,952 US dollar. When we're looking at the top gainers, Trust Wallet token up 10% in EO5 and uh, Clay is up about 4%. Among the losers, Dogecoin is down almost 9%. Um, Stacks 7 and about Conflux 7 as well. When we're looking at here the candlestick chart, just the same as before in the last couple of you know days, all the way go back to mid of March, and Bitcoin is around 28,000. But you know, the, the volume is really going down. So when this is narrowing down, a movement is usually coming up. Is it coming to the upside, to the downside? We will see which way uh, it will go, but uh, it cannot be this forever, right? So sooner or later, it will make a move. Um, by the way, just some interesting information, scary ones. Um, look at this. This is here, as you can see, um, a, a year ago in April, and uh, this is the deposit, basically, uh, in all commercial banks in the United States. And there's a decline. Look at this one here. Since the 1st of March, <coughs> it went down very, very sharply, which means that in the last month or so, people really start to take out money from banks. And they really have to survive because, you know, what they're doing, now they, they, they're selling all the treasuries and all these kind of things to cover it. In loss, they're doing it, by the way. And, uh, well... To cover it, they have to borrow from the Fed. And look at this historically. I just go all the way back here to 1975, right? And now you can see that the borrowing from all commercial banks, well, they borrow from the Fed. And look at this one here. This is a scary one. You have never, ever seen such a sharp and long increase here. And when I go a little bit closer, we can see this one. Basically, it goes back to 8th of March, and since the 8th of March, more than 500 billion US dollar was borrowed from the Fed by all commercial banks. So is this banking situation over? I don't think so. But we will see. I'm definitely following it on this channel. So if you subscribe, then you will stay up to date. Right, and now it's time to move on to the first topic. And the first topic is about the 90 years anniversary when you in the United States had to give your gold to the Fed. You didn't have any other option. So this one happened already in our history. And uh, basically, back in 1933, uh, you know, here it was issued on the 5th of April. So basically, today is the 6th. So yesterday was the anniversary. Um, when actually people, and this is here more clear, uh, so Roosevelt ordered that all gold coins and gold certificates in uh, denominations of more than 100 US dollar turned in for other money. It required all persons to deliver all gold coins, 
gold bullion gold certificates owned by them to the Federal Reserve by the 1st of May for the set price. And this was a fixed price, $20.67 per ounce. And here is the trick. In 1934, a year later, the government price of gold was increased uh, to $35 per ounce effectively increasing the gold on the Federal Reserve balance sheet by 69%. This increase in assets allowed the Federal Reserve to further inflate the money supply. <clears throat> so, can this happen again? Big question. It wasn't even 100 years ago. It's not that long ago. There are people who were, you know, back then alive and still alive right now. Uh, and this is actually very scary especially this trick, that you have to give your gold on a fixed price. It's $20. That's what you get for it. And a year later, they're saying, okay, I have the gold, and now I increase the gold price. Is that fair? What do you think about it? Okay, let me know in the comment section. <coughs> and um, here on, 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 on Twitter, oh, hang on. Sorry. Let me fix this here. It's just a bit messed up. Yeah, now it looks quite better. Okay, so... This is a, a, a interesting one about uh, gold here. Move over, Bitcoin. It's gold's time to shine. <laughs> Environmentally harmful to mine, difficult to store, and even harder to divide. Rich, decadent gold is the best money governments can confiscate and banks can manipulate. Thick, toxic streaks of mercury and silky cyanide pollute and caress ecosystems in developing countries. But gold is worth the massive human and ecological toll because you can touch it. And if you can touch it, it has value. This is funny. I mean, seriously, people do not believe in Bitcoin. In many cases, they, do, they cannot touch it. They can touch gold. So it makes it worth it. Science. The science. That's why Bitcoin has no intrinsic value. No. Bitcoin only offers a secure global, trustless monetary infrastructure to anyone anywhere with an internet connection. But owning gold makes you special. So let's go back to the gold standard. And the typewriter. And the horse-drawn carriage. Because who wants the future of money when you can own a piece of the past? Gold, because you're old. <laughs> Gold because you're old. And of course, uh, I'm not saying that uh, you shouldn't diversify, you know, portfolio and all these kind of things. I think it's it's worth to think about really precious metals because gold does have uh, uh, value. Uh, so don't get me wrong. I just put this video here for you guys because uh, I like this kind of memes and funny things, what's happening here in the, in the, in the, in the crypto world. Um, it's just a, a funny approach in my opinion. And uh, of course, now gold is fine. Gold is also uh, going up, but you still have to think about it. Like we moving forward, we moving towards digital and all these kind of things. And um, you know what? 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 Uh, what the case with with gold is? It's okay, but um, mm, doesn't really fit our present digital life. And uh, bottom line, but what will happen to Bitcoin and what will happen to gold? We see in the future. We don't know the future. We just try to, you know, estimate what, what's, what's going to happen here. And anyway, when we look and get the uh, fiat money, we can see how this is going down, how that one is inflating. And yes, Bitcoin price is up. Gold price is up, actually. Uh, why uh, we have this banking problem uh, recently now in the last couple of weeks. But still, I think this was a funny one. Right. And now let's move on to the next topic. The next topic is that there is a hidden hidden thing in Mac iOS since 1917 which is related to Bitcoin. So what's that? Let's talk about it. So what's the reason behind it? That actually, since 2017, you can find in Mac OS the Bitcoin white paper hidden. You can find it pretty easily. Um, actually, you open Terminal. I did check it on my Mac, and it did work. It's there. And Terminal, and just post this one here. And uh, you run it, and there it is. So for some mysterious reason, you can find the Bitcoin white paper hidden in Mac 
OS since the year 2017. Before not, so in the older versions, you cannot find it. Um, yeah, but since that. And uh, yeah, now question mark, how, how, why did they put it there? Who put it there? How does it happen? What's the message? What's the reason? Many, many questions, but it's just an interesting fact. Okay, uh, what do you think about it? Let me know in the comment section anyway. Uh, right, and now let's move on to the third news. And the third news is all about that the Swiss government-owned bank actually now offers crypto service to its customers. <laughs> So as you can see in the United States, the banks having difficult times to serve crypto, not like on other part of the world, just like in Switzerland, where actually a Swiss government-owned bank named uh, Post Finance offers customers crypto. They have 2.5 million customers actually, and they can now buy, store, and sell Bitcoin, Ether, and thanks to the partnership with Switzerland's Signum Bank. So how interesting is that? The United States is totally against the crypto, at least the, the moves, what they do now. But we have so many other countries, you know, we have like Dubai, Singapore, Hong Kong, Switzerland, El Salvador. So you can see developed countries and, and, and uh, um, <clears throat> those poorer countries as well. In both cases, you can find a crypto friend one. And we do know that that uh, there is big money, big money in Switzerland for sure. And even the government owned bank is open for crypto. Hmm? Just something to think about. Okay, guys. Well, uh, that's it for today. Don't forget, if you like this kind of content, smash the like button and also subscribe to this YouTube channel if you would like to get this daily fresh content, couple of videos, short videos, longer videos, and you would like to stay up to date because this is what is my mission to keep you up to date when it comes to crypto, blockchain, uh, the economic situation, all these kind of things. So you know what's happening in the world uh, in these areas. So uh, see you tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Uh,